Hi, this is Pino Trogo again from San Francisco State University. This is the information design class, and this is the last of a series of eight uh, videos um, which are corresponding to eight items in a in a layout sketch for project two, which is um, showing um, data sets, visualizing data sets for the uh, coronavirus. Um, so item eight is actually a heat map and it's trying to replicate um, what the New York Times and I believe also the San Francisco Chronicle um, is using, uh, which is this uh, very simple device that shows basically every day or maybe every week, I can't tell here. Um, actually March 1st, yeah, I believe March 1st, that stands for uh, 2020. So every single line there is a different color showing um, in this case, weekly cases per capita, okay? I don't have that data, so I'd have to create it by making a sum of every seven days, right? But I didn't do that, I didn't have time. I should have though, because it's a better, it's, it's more again distributed, right? So, um, and probably, oops, probably requires um, fewer, um, fewer bars. So anyway, I did, I used the same file I'd taken from here and I just did two, okay, I didn't do a lot of these because I just wanted to just test it. Uh, so I did California and I did San Francisco and I made the mistake of taking the California, which is a state. So the numbers are very high. And, and San Francisco, which is also a very low county in terms of count. So the colors eventually were a little funny in the final result, but I should have taken just two separate counties, not California to test it. But anyway, I took California. And uh, for this, I had to do the actual daily count. So I had to do that subtraction thing. So let me see if I can show you. Well, again, because I, I wanted to show every day, although if I had done every week, I would have done every seven days. But anyway, um, it doesn't work to have the progressive numbers. Otherwise the color would just get darker and darker and darker, right? Always kind of like the line that goes up, but instead you want to show these fluctuations. Um, so I'm going to see open the, uh, the file, the, uh, so this again would be now in number eight and I'll show you the file first that I got it from. So this I, I created, this was my master for this one, which was the earlier one, except that here now I have the columns where I calculated uh, what each day was. So this is each day and you can see it, it goes up and down, right? Uh, and these are the days. And um, I wrote 33 in the beginning just to get my formula going. So again, this was the formula was um, uh, you know, it's subtracting the this one from that one. And then I cut and paste this all the way down and I get my numbers automatically. Um, Maybe I can reshow it here just in case you missed it earlier. Um, so these are deaths, daily and totals, right? So, well, they started zero, but anyway, this would be, yeah, you can see it's, it's this minus this, right? So if I copy this, well, I have no place here to put it. So if it works, no, because it's uh, I don't like the things on the right. Anyway, um, let me just show it at the top. Cases and deaths, totals and daily. Okay, so I'll just quickly show you. So to there, 
So if these were my toes, and of course at the beginning it was zero, right? But then they started to to grow. And again, this is the toe is always bigger, right? Um, but if I do this cell, let's put the zero there. This cell is equals equals this cell minus this cell. I get zero because it's zero zero. But if I copy now this and I paste it in my series, I should be good. Yeah, it works. So I got exactly what I already have here. So, um, so very recently, let's see, this was, uh, yeah, February 22nd. I guess there weren't any deaths on the 21st and the 20th. And so the number stays the same, right? Okay. But, you know, a day earlier we had seven. And so the number changed from 387 to 394. Okay. So anyway, I had to do this in advance. I couldn't, for this, I couldn't just, you know, calculate or whatever. Um, so now the trouble with the heat map is that I want my numbers corresponding, my cells corresponding exactly how you want. It's like color by numbers. Um, so I want actually my cells to be horizontally distributed. So what I did is I did a cut and paste from this and I'll actually, I copied and then I did a transpose, a paste special and transpose them. Um, so you just simply do copy and then you go to um, yeah so if I, if I copy this select all copy and then under edit you say paste special and then here you say transpose and I'm not doing it now but you'll get you'll get this and from this I just took um, Let's see, I know this is San Francisco, so what did I want? I forgot. Oh yeah, daily deaths for California. Right, I, I guess I, all right, Cal, Cal and SF, SF. Okay, good, I forgot what I did there. So Cal, California daily and San Francisco daily. Okay, so, and the, the first row is just the dates. Um, so, let's save that. Um, so now, this was done in R because there is, um, I took it from this book, which we used to have in the class, that has a lot of R exercises from Nathan Yao, Yao and, um, and this chapter talked about how to do a heat map using basketball. Um, anyway, uh, the code is there uh, that if you want to use it, um, and I'll just show you. Okay, so let me open the file in R. And here it's just a matter if you have your own file that you set up properly, it's just a matter of really replacing just a few, a few words, a few names in the in the in the code, and it will work. I mean, you know, R is pretty good. It, it always works as long as you know it's, you have the right commas and everything. Um, so I'll just do. I'll just keep very quickly. I'm not. I'm not gonna try to like, because it should work. So um, I did annotate everything. And um, even like where I got the original data sets and, oh yeah, this actually, I don't know if I should show that. <laughs> That's a little hack uh, for the New York Times. Yeah, it's okay. It's it's nothing. 
uh, oh yeah, actually it just shows how to get the JSON file. It's it's public. I mean, it's in the source. It's in the source HTML. So it's just a question of looking for it. So I don't think they'll get uh, too upset if if they use it since they're giving it away anyway. Um, okay, so I want you'll have to read this. This is just go to I learn and grab it. Um, so what we did was we imported again the uh, data set from text and it was um, this one, okay. California, San Francisco cases, 2021, 02-22. I'm not gonna do that because I already have it. Well, actually, let me, let me do this. Um, if you open it, it will ask you, okay, what do you wanna do? And the first thing you really wanna do is just make the name short. So I'm just gonna call these cases. Um, actually, I don't want this. I want the one that has both cases and I guess that's the one yeah no, that's oh i see i have cases and that's so i forget which one i did i think i did both so anyway when you bring it in let's say it's that's just let me see which one i did yeah i did that's first so um make sure you um you shorten the name that way it'd be much easier okay make sure you tell it it's a heading and you can see now the dates are at the top, except it puts an X in front of the numbers because it doesn't like to have header names starting with numbers. It also puts a dot, wherever else, I guess there was a slash. So it puts a dot, it doesn't like spaces or, or, or slashes. Um, so you would say, okay, right? I'm not gonna do that now. So once you bring it in, I'm just gonna run to the code, okay? Um, and this is just the way it was explained. I'm sure there is a better um, system from a package for R called ggplot, which has like already made these graphic things. Uh, but anyway, uh, this does something to the first column. It says in the code, in the, in the comments there. Um, so I ran that. I don't know. Let's see if that's region. Maybe I, maybe I should. Yeah, no, okay. I have to um, I have to reimport it. So that's let's import it, otherwise it doesn't like it. Um, Okay, yep. So, so now that should run. Yep. So when you don't get an arrow down below, that's good. Um, so that does something to the first column. It gets rid of it and it signs a number. Uh, and then this shifts. Um, all the columns, and I know that I had, I had 360 records. So you should you should check that in your other file, uh, um, you know, before you transpose it to see how many there are, because you need to remember this number. So anyway, this this shifts um, by one, and um, nothing happens again, but it's happening in the background, and then this creates, I guess, it's a function. Um, it's called D, D, D matrix, and this. See if I can zoom in. Yes, okay, sorry. It's a little bigger here. Uh, and all you have to do is put the cursor here and just run it. Um, so this actually creates the matrix. So this creates, it's a different thing, different from a vector. Don't ask me what that means exactly, but um, it just means that it's like a, a checkerboard 
um, that's what we need. Okay, so if I run that, it created the matrix called D matrix. And basically, if I click, it's this one here. See, so it's, crea it's created a new, new spreadsheet, so to speak. And then this does it. This creates the, um, oh, actually, this gives it a name to the map. And it gives it particular colors. Um, so let's see if we run it, that's what happens. So we know that San Francisco and this is California, but the colors are weird. It's a scale of um, cyan and magenta colors. Let's zoom in even further. Yeah. And uh, the scale is the row. So basically it takes, it takes whatever it has and it just assigns the color. And there is 256 colors, so that's too many. So we'll try again with um, a different thing called heat colors. Yeah, so these are from some scale. I believe they're all from Color Brewer, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, that's too much. And because also they're not, So let's let's specify like specific. This gives it this creates a new set of colors that we specified um, in uh, hexadecimal. And now we run it again with that, and we get this. So that looks now pretty good, right? This this looks. Um, the only thing that it doesn't show is the California. Of course, the bar should be darker because you know there's more. Um, but maybe that's not important, right? Since this just shows how it fluctuates. Um, okay, this installs the R Color Brewer, which is a library. You can also install packages here by finding them um, somewhere here. Yeah, R Color Brewer right there. Um, and let me just quickly show you what that is. It's a, a website actually. And the way you can find sets of colors, okay? You can specify how many colors you might want, and then you can pick from the different scales. And then these are the hexadecimals. You could even just copy them from here, right? Um, very useful, especially it was created for maps. So this installs a version of that. And once you install that, then you can pick colors from the presets. And in this case, we're gonna call a preset that's called oranges from the color brewer. So when we run it using those, we get that. And that's that's very close now to what we want. But again, you see that because it's taking the values from the, from the total, um, it's making darker lines, it looks like for San Francisco, which kind of doesn't make sense, right? But it does good, give a good snapshot. Um, and instead, if we say that the scale is none right here, let's see what happens. Yeah, so this is actually correct. The reason why there is nothing showing in San Francisco is because now it's taking really the true values and because San Francisco is so low compared to, of course, California, it's basically using the lightest possible color. I think that's what's happening. I can't quite know for sure. Um, so anyway, uh, it's it's it, you can have fun with it. It's an experiment, um, and we could solve this problem probably by not comparing San Francisco to California, but comparing it to another to another county instead. So anyway, I did the same. Um, o and R, you can run a summary of your data set. For example, oh no, actually that's not good. That doesn't help us. Um, so if we wanted to do the same for cases, oh, now somehow it's not giving me an error. Um, we could just do the same thing here. Oh, yes, we have to. Um, okay, I'm actually not gonna show it. It would basically create a slightly different because it's for cases instead, okay? But you'd have to bring in the file. Uh, for cases. All right.
So this is it. And again, this was, I don't know if I showed it, but this was here. I was trying to replicate this thing right here. Okay. So that's the heat map. Um, and there is a way to do it in Tableau. We have, we have to work on that. Okay. Uh, and maybe you can find it on your own. All right. So this is the last one. And I hope you have fun trying all these different things. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.